we're driving uh, continuous improvement work for Tetra Pak's global package material development. He has over 12 years experience in driving continuous improvement at Alpha Laval and in many different departments at Tetra Pak. So for now, let me go ahead and turn things over to Jonas. Yeah, thank you. And uh, what I will share is how we work with continuous improvement or what, what we call challenge driven improvements from one company, I mean, from, from a user perspective, so to say. And, and what we do for doing that is what we use Kata. And I, so I will give you an introduction a bit what we see as Kata in our way of working with it. And then also I will introduce you to what we do in Tetra Pak around this. And um, what we, I'll just, and this is a bit how we view CAT. And we also got some help from Pia and you are Kim uh, in Reveire. And um, the, um, what we call it, as I said, is challenge to improvement, and we do it for Toyota Kata. And, um, And when we talk about that, we mean um, the more or less visible parts of, of lean and, and the way of applying it. So to have a more systematic and scientific way of thinking and acting regarding it, and also how the managers are involved in changing their behavior in the way of doing it. So for us, it's really a way of, of changing the organization's behavior um, towards the strategic challenges. And um, what Kata helps us with is, is having a pattern of thinking beyond what we know today and, and giving us some routines and way of working when we go beyond what we know uh, around improvements. And just for an exercise here and, and a bit share what, what we mean with it. Um, so if you read on the screen what you can see now in the text below here. Yeah, it's amazing how your brain helps you to fill in the blanks here. So if you do the same thing around this one on the screen, and this time it didn't help you maybe so much, and, and that's the, the amazing and also a bit the dangerous part sometimes with our brains, that it helps you to fill in the blanks instead of saying that we don't know yet. And this is really an important part of our improvement to, to see that knowledge threshold. Because sometimes it could guide you wrongly if you go beyond that one and start to create action plans and, and, and planning and, um, and guessing on, on what to do next instead of actually start experimenting and, and, uh, and, and, and learn along the way. Um, but as I said, it could cre create you problems and, and it's important for you to see where these thresholds are, the knowledge threshold because otherwise it starts to, to uh, create faulty decisions for it. But this way of thinking is not, we're not born with it, so we have to learn along and, and, and understand it and, and get some training on how to do it. So that's why in our improvement we include both, both the, the learner part, so, so how we do with uh, the improvement kata, how we understand the directions with our improvements and, and also how we grasp the current conditions and setting what we call the next target condition. And I will explain it a bit more later. And then iterative, we work towards those target conditions. But at the same time, also we need to support the, the coaching of it and, and uh, be better on how we coach and help that, so how the managers work in this area to, to help the teams on the improvement capability. Uh, and this is also then an important part for us, how to work on that. So let's get into what we do then in Tetra Pak regarding this. And also since I'm quite far away from most of the other persons in this conference sitting in Sweden here, I will give you a bit of introduction very briefly on what is Tetra Pak. What we do is that we are specialized on providing customers with complete solutions on processing, packaging and distributing food products and mostly liquid food. And the part I'm in is the part that work on packaging material development. So it's carton packages that we that we sell, and also the the equipment to create those packages. 
and, and I'm working then on the material development of the cotton material in those packages. And we sell 184 billion of packs every year on that, and we are a, a global company. Uh, and the case for us was, or, or the task was to spread the continuous improvements to the full company. And we have a very well established way of working in the supply chain with a world class manufacturing. Uh, and also, this way is very um, based on improving through eradication of losses and defects. But when, when going into to our area, uh, we really need to think about what is triggering and motivating the continuous improvement in our part of the company. Because as I explained before, we work on packaging material development, and we are about of 200 people in the company doing that globally. And in our part of the environment, we have very long cycle times, and we have non-repetitive work, most of the work, and, and in some cases it could be five years long in de technology development projects. So, so uh, this was the environment we now try to, to move in with the continuous improvement part. And the first thing, uh, by going back to, to the approach I explained before with the Carta, is that we, we were working a lot on setting a challenge where we were going. And, and this challenge was set together with management, so it was aligned with the strategy where we were going on the long term and, and helping us setting a clear direction and the scope on where we improve. So, so we set clear focus areas for our improvements. And we also spent a lot of time on communicating and gathering the input from the organization that these areas were the right ones and also that, that they were um, known in, in the organization, that this is the focus and this is the way we will now continue to work on improving our strategic objectives and our capability on delivering on, on those. Uh, another important part was that we were not focusing on the losses and defects and, and in this approach. We were focusing on, on the challenges ahead and where we could go even further than we were today, so going beyond what, what we could. Uh, and I think this was an important part also in all type of environment as previous speaker also was talking about. And what we also tried to do here is that we, we tried to do it differently uh, in how we tried it in other parts of our organization because we needed to, to adapt the environment that was triggering the, the culture of this part of the organization. So we focus a lot on, on the challenge and not so much on the losses. Uh, the, the losses, of course, we need to to handle, but we handle them as obstacles to get to the challenge. So I think, as mentioned before, it's really a, a similar work quite often, but it's another way of talking around it. Um, so, um, uh, and also it was very clear for us that this was the way of improving our capability to reach our, to work on our technology leadership and, and also that it was part of all the other uh, measures and, and KPIs we have in our balance scorecard. So it's not something we do in parallel, it's something we do to improve the, the way that we deliver the value and, um, and in innovations. And then another part that was important for us in this was that it was concrete and it was time set. So besides the challenges that we have on a one, three years time is that we, we every second month we set the target condition and that target condition is set by each of the, the teams that are working with improving a certain area. And, and then we, we've, we uh, work on, on securing that these target conditions are moving in a good speed towards the challenges and then the, the teams own the target conditions and the experiments they do to, to reach the target conditions. Uh, another important area for us was that we were not using action lists. What we were using is experiment logs. So, so when we use the PDCA loops to, to improve towards the target conditions, and then they, they used experiment logs to, to understand the learnings from each experiment and what step they take towards the next experiment based on the learning they did in the previous one. And, and what we learned along the way was that this approach really fitted quite well with our culture in, in development and technology development, that it was a lot around the experimenting and the creative thinking to, to overcome the obstacles to reach the target conditions and go towards the challenges, instead of talking about uh, the losses and, and the problems we had in, in that way of working. So 
So that was one part of it. And this is a bit illustrating how we, we followed up the, the target condition. As I said before, we, we were breaking, breaking down the challenges to target conditions and each target conditions was set as a learning from the previous target conditions by the teams. But of course also we, we would like to understand that the target condition, because some areas was really untouched before, so of course we learned and the target conditions quality became much better along the way based on that the teams get much more knowledge about the area and how to approach it. But for every target condition they of course have delivered a, a number of improvements in, in their experiments, but the level of the improvement increased on, on every target condition. And of course in the end of the year the target conditions they have should be really close to the full challenge. And, and, and uh, now when we get close to the challenges of course it's important to see so we have new challenges or continuous challenges and raises the bar on those challenges to the next coming years. But, but these target conditions have really helped us to keep the, the pace of the improvements uh, and I think there is also as mentioned before a lot of similarities with an agile approach on how you work with sprints and, and, and um, the learning loops connected to that. Then another part that is important for us here is um, how we actually secure that we, we get the routines or the, the habits as uh, discussed before also into our way of working so, so we, this becomes something that is natural for us of doing and I think this is really key for us and that's where we focus a lot on the coaching also of the improvements in the different parts. Uh, and of course we are on a learning path, so, so right now we, we are about 25% of the organization is directly involved in these improvements and, and we, we, we increase that number because we would like it to, to be of course known and used by, by everybody in our organization. Uh, and it also changes quite a lot the manager's role when it comes to improvements. Uh, it's not something they can just um, sponsor and, and, and give the, the money and the time for, for the organization to do. It's something we re really need to get closely involved in and coached and, and, and be part of themselves. And that's why also we worked a lot on the principles for, for management when, when they are involved in the improvements. So, so they have a more joint way of, of dealing with it and, and, uh, and working on it. And those principles, one is that the coach owns the results um, and the challenge, but the team always owns the target condition and the way they approach it to secure that they are empowered to do the way that they, they approach it in, in a good way. And then also that the coach aligned with the empowerment is not giving solutions. They focus on the improvement capability. So we're working on the improvements in a good way but we are not giving the solutions and dance. So. And then also that we, we focus a lot on supporting frequent experiments and learning from them. Uh, and this has been a challenge for us from breaking down the improvements to, to small improvements uh, in the experiments instead of trying to, to get to those target conditions and challenges by doing a huge steps but learning by small steps. And then another important part for, for getting these habits attractive in, in place has been also to, to give help to the organization by using a second coach um, to make it stick uh, and that these principles are applied daily by the management. And another help from us has also been the agile approach and how we work with Scrum in our organization because this is very much close to this way of thinking and, and working with improvements. So they recognize the, the language and the way of working with And then this is a bit where we are on this journey. And, um, and I think one area that we are quite green on, if we look on the arrow on the right, is that we have a clear challenge on how we need to become more agile, faster agile and customer centric in our way of developing and, and breaking that down to concrete areas and, and, and capabilities in our organization to work on. But we need to keep that focus and we need to sharpen it even further to, to get more concrete and more able to, um, to quantify and, and uh, 
set the bar uh, uh, in a good way uh, for the future. But I think this is a strength in, in the way we approach it. And then another one is uh, that I think we have come some way with, but still need to improve further, is to have measurable results in a way of improving. And I think this by monthly target conditions is a, is a good way of putting a stick in the ground and, and move to that uh, in a continuous way instead of having the target too far away. So it gets very concrete and measurable for the team that they are moving forward. Um, and then also visualizing and quantifying the improvement results is something we we could continue and on improving on, but but I think we have improved a lot on it. But then I think the most tricky part and um, and uh, something we worked a lot on and improved a lot is um, the strong improvement culture to really build this and and create the persistent leadership around it and applying the coaching principles frequently in the organization. So there is a good buy-in, but I think the frequency we need to improve further uh, to make that uh, much more daily than it is today. Um, and then also to support improvement and coaching capability for using Agile. It, the, the way we work with Agile and Scrum in our organization have increased uh, the, the last years, and, and this has actually helped us also in building this culture of uh, of dealing with the knowledge thresholds and experiments and around improvements um, because there's a lot of similarities with that approach. Yeah, this is just a picture showing a bit of the the, the theory, so to say, around the, the Kata approach. And I think we apply all of this uh, in, in different ways, uh, but what we also have, uh, have done is that we need to translate it into a language that were attractive and, and usable in our organization. But, but um, it has been key for us to work on experimenting in small steps and setting target conditions and challenges to also secure that we have a clear direction on where we go with our improvements. And also the coaching questions has been key to change the approach from explained before also to have solutions uh, uh, to move towards instead uh, coaching the way we uh, approach the problem or uh, the improvements and handling the obstacles to get to where we need to be. And then uh, also as said before, um, it's important to always recognize the knowledge threshold and secure that we are learning along the way instead of creating action plans for improvements. It's quite easily to, and we have seen that many times in our organization, to, to start to, to write these action plans when to take the next step to, towards the, the target conditions. But it is a false security to do so because you start to guess and, and it easily to go beyond your, what you know today instead of experiment and learn along the way. And another important area for us on the improvements has also been to uh, to secure that we have the roles in place to uh, to get this uh, to stick in, in a good way. And and one important role is the um, is the one leading the improvement team. Um, what is here on the picture called the learner? Uh, what is called in Kata? Um, but securing that the team takes the ownership of the target condition and works towards achieving it. And, uh, and the learner and the team then works on applying what is the improvement kata. And then also another important role that, and this part of the picture I focused a lot on, and, and, and I think we, we come a long way of getting these teams to take on that role. But what I've been focusing more on lately is the coaching role from, from the managers, securing that they take the responsibility of also coaching how to work with improvements and the patterns, but also take the ownership of the results uh, on the challenges and, and really work on, on the coaching kata to, to put the questions in a good way to the team. And then this one is uh, the part that I mostly have taken in, in the picture to, uh, to support the different areas and the coaches and the learners and uh, to, the, to how we work with the improvements. And, and, um, 
and help the coaches on, on helping the teams on, on, on how we work with the improvements in the best way. So um, this has really been the focus and, and the work done so far. So this was more to share how we take on the continuous improvement in our development areas when we work with very long cycles and non repetitive work but to create uh, and, and get the habits to stick in a good way on continuously improving our way of and working and, and being faster, more agile and customer centric in that way of developing. So um, that was a bit faster maybe, but we have more time for questions then instead. So I do actually have a couple of questions, and we do have uh, time time for those questions. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go Great. ahead and get started. The first question is: Can you give some examples of how Kata really impacted your organization's knowledge threshold? Yeah, I think um, there are several. Um, just thinking one that maybe is good, but I think one good example is. Uh, an important area for us in, in our development has been how we work with uh, virtual engineering and stimulating instead of physical testing things. And this area has been struggling with how they get their math models uh, validated and verified enough to be able to, to get the organization to trust them that we could replace physical testing by doing this. But this way of approaching it with, the, with the experimenting and, and learning along the way to, uh, to get the models to that level have helped them a lot. So this is an approach that will help them to, and also get the, the buy-in from the organization and the understanding that this is this could save us a lot of time and efforts by using that virtual engineering instead, and also get the trust from the organization. So, so that is an area I think that has helped, us, uh -huh. that has been helped by it. Trust, gaining trust, that takes a lot yeah. of work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, our, our second question that came in is, can you describe how best to begin developing the three core roles for the daily practicing with examples of what you have done at Tetra Pak? And if you need me to repeat the question, I'm happy to do so. Just let me know. No, but if I kept it correctly, it was uh, the three roles I showed in the end. So the, the coach, the second coach, and the learner. Yeah, I believe that's what it's alluding to. Yeah. And so how, how to best begin developing those roles for daily practicing? Mm. I think one thing that has been important has to have the second coach in place. And, and this is a role I've taken to, uh, to, to, to have somebody dedicated to get this in place and, and, and working on it on a daily basis within the organization as part of the organization. Because I think this is also part of trust and um, as, and, and also having the, the trust from the management and from the organization to um, yeah, to challenge them actually in the way they work with improvements. Uh, and, and also I think securing that we turn it into something that is attractive for both the management and the learner, so that one being the team leader, to, to, uh, to take part of and, and change the behavior in that direction, I think has also been a key to it. And when it comes to the, the coaches, the managers, uh, this is uh, to get that in place has also been really important to get uh, the senior management to support that this is this is how we lead change or lead improvements in our organization so it's not something you do on the side it's part of your manager role and, and I think on the leader part uh, or on the, not the leader or the team leader we call it but the, the learner in, in the picture uh, the ones leading the improvement teams it has been important to uh, to make it as an attractive uh, role as well. Uh, I mean, this is something you, you're not doing full time. You do it also part of your work, but you need to do it in areas where there is something that you uh, there is something in it for you, and, and it's something you really need to improve that helps your uh, your daily job, your mm -hmm. environment in development. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that has been some. I know if it answered the question completely, but. I, I think you've done a very nice job. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer those two questions. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dwayne now. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Jonas. 
Jonas, I wanted to thank you for uh, uh, participating in this this uh, unique session. Um, you are you said you're in Sweden, is that correct? Yes, it is. We were, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but we were actually in Malmo, Sweden, this time last year, doing a TWI summit. Okay. Um, and one of the interesting things that happened, as you were talking Kata, it really struck me that you're seeing Kata infiltrate into so many different areas of uh, mm -hmm. product development. Um, but one of the things that we noticed coming out of the TWI summit is that those TWI practitioners have really uh, grabbed on to the Kata methodology and the Kata thinking. Mm -hmm. So what that actually did is it spurred us to do the next year uh, both of those together. So mm -hmm. you, you may have seen this, but we're doing a uh, TWI and Kata summit in uh, Hamburg, Germany here just a couple weeks. So mm -hmm. anyway, team yeah. that up nicely. So yeah. thank you so much for your uh, for your presentation. I greatly appreciate yeah. you being part of this.